welcome to Fast Cars, Fast Girls with Abby and Molly. All right, so here with us today, um, I think maybe the fourth time we've spoken with, but um, <laughs> the first time that we're recording without any wild background noise. So we have Kara Adams with us today. Always a pleasure to talk with you and you and Abby. I'm really great, happy to be here. Well, thank you. We love we love chatting with you. Always. So we're going to ask some, some repeat questions. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who weren't in any of our live interviews with her, um, you Kara, tell us... You're right, you suck. Um, you should go to more races. No. They were fun. <laughs> they were very out. fun. You missed yeah. out on a good time. Um, so, Kara, kind of tell us how you got started into the uh, the science world in general. Science world in general, I was really lucky to have two parents as educators. My mom was a science teacher. So, in my area, my dad was a language teacher, mom was a science teacher. The girls do science and the guys do language. That's at least what I knew growing up. So I love science. Um, we've chatted a, a bit before, so if you caught some of the other awesome live interviews, you maybe have heard some of this, but we, I was able to do some neighborhood science camps growing up, so my mom would do all kinds of cool stuff. Things that sound just absolutely bizarre and some things that are very normal now, like making slime and silly putty is mm. all a thing. You can mm -hmm. interest some of these ideas and some of them, they're really neat, but we were making these things when we were kids and my mom would open up the garage and set up tables and chairs and she'd have the neighborhood kids oh, over. so cool. She did some crazy things like, all right, so we wanted to learn about anatomy. So she would go to the local butcher and she said, do you have any leftover parts that we can look at? Because I want to show you how That's muscles awesome. work. Oh, wow. We actually had cow eyeballs. Oh. So yes. leftover parts. So she was looking at the eye and then we, we kind of sounds them. a little a little weird but we had it pinned to a board and uh -huh. we we're learning about mm -hmm. the retina we we're learning about how the different features of the eye work so my mom was really hands-on and i have always been a hands-on learner i love science i love taking apart things i was the girl that had yeah like my barbies and stuff like that but they usually ended up in a pile in the corner with their heads torn off and i was looking at the legos and trying to steal my brother's toys uh -huh. so my, i think my parents realized early on i had that aptitude for science i, had I feel that like our bedrooms looks very similar oh yeah <laughs> yeah forget forget the barbies they're over in the corner yeah, i mean like so I, mean, I, I, I still enjoyed my barbies but it's like they yeah. had their place but it was yeah legos yep. everywhere oh, building gosh, yes. and then deconstructing yes. and looking something how can I make it look yes. like that I'm making that I'm creating that so I've always been super hands-on I think it started with all those playing the things as a toy as a kid you know I went into the University of Akron where they have the formula s8 program design build an open wheel race car really liked the whole hands-on getting getting my hands dirty just really I, I'm a learner by getting my hands dirty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you take something apart you can really see how it goes back together you can really understand how how it operates and why it operates. Those are always the fun things that, you know, even in high school we had you know, science classes, my physics classes in high school, one of the things that I loved in that class was we always did projects, hands-on projects, whether it was like an egg drop competition or other things where you're, you're designing and you're building things. And the way it was structured, my teacher had a, you do all your classes and your grades and stuff like that, but if you, if you won the competition, you automatically got an extra grade letter. Mm. This is probably not the best teaching of work <laughs> ethics, but I realized that I could just do so-so and everything else, and I just win all the competitions, and I design all the things best, and I win, and then I always got A's in that class. I feel like that's like playing to your kids. Strength. Don't do this at home. <laughs> oh, it's working smart, not hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Smarter, not harder. All right, and so uh, growing up with, with parents in, in science, so you right off the bat when you went to college, you went straight for like the engineering stuff or were you kind of? I still wasn't sure. Yeah. So when I when I started out, I thought, you know, there's a lot of different things that I could do and I wasn't 100% in the engineering school. Um, but I started taking classes and I realized I had the aptitude of doing that. And then when I was in school, I wandered down into the College of Engineering machine shop mm -hmm. where they were designing and building uh, the Formula SAE car. So, um, I did not know much about cars. I didn't know much about racing. I didn't really have much of an interest in racing, but I kind of formed that as I as I started working with this car. You, I learned a lot of the machine tools, how to use a mill, how to use a lathe, um, just how a car goes together. And again, it's the hands-on, just getting your hands yeah. dirty. You really understand how things work. So, and then once I started putting things together, then I started working on the design side working on the suspension system of the car, so designing the uprights, how the kinematics of the suspension goes together. I learned a lot there. So that was really what got me interested in racing. And then the first time that we had a, you know, had the car on on a little parking lot with a lot of cones set up and I got to drive it, I was like, oh this is this is fantastic. I, I think <laughs> I think this is what I want to do. It was what I what I want to do with my life. It was interesting. 
you ladies were at this awesome women in motorsports panel earlier today and we were able to talk a little bit about you know, how we got involved and how we got got into things but you know, i learned so much hands-on in this team and what we were able to do um I, it really got the the racing bug and it was funny my my sophomore year i think it was the guys designed the seats i was designing the sus suspension one of the guys was designing the interiors they made the cockpit where you sit boy hip width. Mm -hmm. So my first time that I was actually able to get in the car was like, I don't, I don't fit. None of the seats fit. I don't fit. So you guys, you can't see me on the podcast here, but I'm, I'm wiggling around in my chair trying to explain how I actually was trying to get myself in that car. So it was, it was a little bit unfortunate that year, but you know, my junior, senior year, we made sure that the car was inclusive for everyone. <laughs> Inclusive race cars. How about that? I like that. Really I like yeah. That's Excellent. funny about the hip width. My goodness. Just <laughs> yeah. one of those small things that nobody thinks well, about. Well, yeah, think boys yeah. wouldn't think about yeah. that. No. Yeah. no. Well, it's Definitely interesting not. even when people are developing passenger cars. That's a lot of things that they look mm -hmm. at and make sure that you design it for everybody. All different mm -hmm. heights and different weights. And it's, it's a really interesting, the ergonomics that actually go into designing a car or a race car. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's another deep dive that it I is. spent hours and hours on, I think, on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what? Um, for Actually, for anybody who listens to our show that doesn't know you and didn't hear any of the live ones, I didn't even ask this. So tell us your official title and, mm -hmm. and what you do right now. Say, so, right. so everybody knows yes. why we're talking to you. She's, we didn't just find her on the street. I was walking down the PRA we show, just, and I saw all of your checkered flag stuff, and I thought, you ladies are awesome. <laughs> I would love to talk to you. Come talk to me. <laughs> I, I am the chief engineer for Bridgestone America's Motorsports, and I lead the team that designs and develops the tires that are used in the IndyCar series. And one of the really cool things about that, especially with our wet tires, is that um, a lot of the advancements and things that you make go directly into changes and um, changes in the tires that we use on our daily driver cars. Yeah. It's not, I say, everything that happens in the racing world filters down mm -hmm. and affects our, our regular tires that we use on all of our daily driver cars. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great point. And one of the reasons that most people are in racing is to develop their technology and to show what we can do. So Firestone has been in racing since 1911. The very first Indy 500 <laughs> drove to victory on Firestone tires. And I love the stat at the Indianapolis 500 that Firestone as a brand has won more Indianapolis 500s than all other tire manufacturers combined times two. Wow. So wow. it's a it really, it's a stat we're really proud about. But there's a, a lot of, you know, when we started out racing, it was win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And you can get these same tires that are on mm. these Indy cars on your car. Well, it's evolved to a more of a purpose-built race car, race tire mm -hmm. that actually goes for the needs of a race car. You're not going to take your tire and go 240 <laughs> miles per hour. And yeah. Indy, I hope not. Please don't try that at <laughs> home. But we, there's a lot of technology that does transfer out. So the rain tire was a great project where we were able to use some new technology within the company, and that's going to migrate its way out into the passenger car development. There's a lot of some of the fundamental tools that we use to design race tires that actually transfer their way over as well. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. the more you develop in technology, obviously that filters yeah. down and can be tweaked for different needs. And Yeah, yeah. It, and it fits another way too. We actually work with different engineers in the company. So our Firestone Race Engineering team is part of the overall Bridgestone America's Technical Center, and we have engineers that are advanced tire engineers. They're designing your Bridgestone and Firestone passenger tires and other agricultural tires, off-the-road tires. We're working hand-in-hand -hand with those engineers. So my engineering team, we, we don't like to call it the off-season because sure. just awesome. because we're not, not racing, racing does not we? mean we're not working. But <laughs> we have a little bit more flexibility that during those periods of time, our race engineers are actually embedded in passenger groups or in mm. other groups within the company. So we are able to tra transfer not just our technology, but some of our knowledge back and forth, and it goes both directions. Oh, that's really cool. That's so excellent. That's really cool that they're yes. kind of embedded in yeah. the yeah. non-off-season. So off -season. I love it. One of my, my engineers, Anna, she's our street course engineer. She actually worked on the rain tire. She's actually going to be working in a pattern group for passenger tires. So it's it's. Oh. we were talking about that technology transfer. That's another way that it happens. Yeah, that's excellent. And that's... So I, I feel like that's a testament to what a great, solid company Firestone yeah. is, mm -hmm. because it would be very easy for you know those two areas to not communicate, and that would be twice as much work for for both sides. And so to have that natural like synergy, and we're all going to work together. And, all right, these bits and pieces don't work for you, but you can use the rest of that. And yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a cool. it's a really it's a really great supportive system. Uh, we we work really closely with everybody. My manager is actually the chief tech chief technology officer of Bridgestone Americas 
Mm -hmm. Artrigi, he's just a really great support for us. So if we need resources, he's really mm -hmm. able to bring those in and help us out. That's good. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So how did you get focused on tires? So you, you kind of started with the, the, the engineering and building everything. Was there something special about the tires or was it? So how did I end up in tires? How did you end up in tires? So this is the question. question. So I am from Akron, Ohio, <laughs> the rubber capital of the world. And in fact, when I went to school at the university, our stadium was actually called the Rubber Bowl. So oh, it's it's very fantastic. much of a, a, a tire industry. Okay. When I graduated, I was looking at anything that might lead me into a motorsports job. Sure. You can't just graduate and say, here's my resume. I want to be a race engineer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. But you can... Basically, put yourself in a position where you can talk to people, you can do work, you can do whatever you need to do to get yourself into that role. Well, looking at motorsports areas, I looked at a couple a couple companies up in Detroit, one down mm -hmm. in Marysville, um, talked to a few different people, and um, I found actually the, a company with a really strong racing program. We were talking about Bridgestone's involvement in racing and the Firestone brand all the way back to 1911. Yeah. Understanding that if you start with a company that has a really strong racing heritage, chances are racing is going to be part of their DNA, part of their sure. core. So um, I started out in tires, not really necessarily because I thought I want to build tires when I grow up, but that was a, a great opportunity to get involved in racing. But when I started working with tires, I realized how fantastically complex they are. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're designing a wheel, you have your, your tall inches and you machine the wheel and there you go, you're good to go. But the, it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> but I'll give them credit. But when we were designing a race tire, there are so many different parts and pieces and components that... And factors. And factors, yeah. So you look External at... External factors. Yes, you, yeah. look at, you look at a, a tire, and most people look at a tire, it has some tread, and you think it's round, black, and made of rubber, and you don't realize that there's a lot of steel and fibers and textiles and different types of rubber components and polymers and everything that goes into the structure of the tire and the compounds that are in the tire. So... I, back to going, you know, being really hands-on and loving challenges, the challenge of designing a mm. tire, let alone a race tire, are it's just something that always keeps me engaged and keeps me motivated because it's always complex. It's never, it's never a simple problem. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm able to lead that team with Anna and a lot of the other engineers in the group, you can see their progression and then going a little bit from the making the tires myself to leading the team that makes them. Um, but still, you know, the, at the end of the day, I've got a sign on the dotted mm -hmm. line that the, the design is okay. So it, it's, it's a really neat opportunity that I have to still be involved in the development of the tires, but be able to grow that next generation of talent. That's really awesome. And, and speaking of developing new tires, see, I'm just segueing all, Look at you. Got this, yeah. all in today. I've had coffee and water. So with IndyCar going to new tracks um, this upcoming season, how does that kind of work for you guys? Do you... Like how I'm, I'm sure you're very very involved, but is it all? Is it you know you got to design a whole new tire, or you're hoping you can kind of like borrow from other tracks? How does that work for you guys? So great question. One of the things that we start with is do we have history in the track? Mm. So let's take the two new tracks on the IndyCar series this year. We've got Laguna Seca, and we've got Circuit of the Americas. So Laguna Seca, what we do is we go back into the history books and we say, all right, what did we use last time we were here? So you get a, a general sense of what we had last time we were there along with some vehicle data, so we're able to pull those, that vehicle data and those tires into some simulation programs we already have. Uh, we, are able, we are also able to go there and go to a tire test with a general idea of what we want to build. What helps us to go with that is we have, we're able to scan the surface of the track. Oh, so we have, cool. it's basically a, a, a blue laser that scans a surface and gets the idea of the roughness of the track. So if you think about a concrete surface versus an asphalt surface mm -hmm. that you might drive on in your car, there's going to be differences in grip between the two. So we're able to take a machine and we're able to scan that track and we're able to put it into a library of different tracks that we've also scanned and what we have information on. Mm -hmm. So we looked at that and looked at that track scan and said, all right, it's most similar to the Indianapolis Grand Prix part of the pavement. Hmm. So you start with that piece and then you look at the loads and the speeds that the car should be seeing and then you're able to go from there and, and develop a tire or at least a, a few steps at the first set of tires that we go. So so Laguna, that's great. We have some information in some place like Circuit of the Americas that we have not raced. We had a, a, a couple of aero kit tests when mm -hmm. we, were, we were developing the initial two aero kits. So we had some information from that, but not a lot of information because the cars didn't run really hard. 
So that's where we rely on that technology, that track scanning, mm -hmm. and then looking at some of the some of the data that we might get, some simulations. We work really closely with IndyCar and both Honda and Chevy too. So the folks at Pratt and Miller and the folks at Honda are great at working with. You know, we can give them a tire model and then they can give them give us back their their estimations oh, based on cool. the vehicle models. So we get in the ballpark, then we go and test with the tires. And then we're ready for the, the track. Circuit of the Americas is interesting because the open test is coming up in February, so it's our first on track for IndyCar. Oh, a boy. really tight timeline for that. Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. And of course February is yes. the weather's gonna be different yep. and it's Austin and Yes. Oh yeah. my. Yeah. Well and for I say for any of our listeners who did not hear our tires, tires, tires episode last season, um, something that I always find very interesting is that on a race car, depending you know on the track, all four tires aren't the same. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the demands of each tire is different, and the strain put on it, and the amount of you know rubber fall off and all that. Um, and so it's not just you're designing one tire and this is great. And we're you know like like your daily driver. All right, I'm gonna hit four Firestone tires mm -hmm. for my Honda Civic, whatever, blah blah. Like no, each each tire <laughs> is all of that, all of that complexity times four. Yes, and they're all great. a little different and. Yeah, yeah, so at a place like a, an oval, those differences in tires are really, really important because if you're constantly turning left, you're putting more load on the outside or the right side tires. So those right side tires have to be more durable. So if you think about a, a basketball, if you're pushing a basketball down, you know you get a little bit of, of deflection or change in, in a little mm -hmm. bit of a give. But if you push harder, you get more give. So essentially, if you can take that that basketball and make it stiffer either by adding extra air or by making the, the structure itself a little bit stiffer, you can actually affect the handling characteristics of the basketball, i.e. the race car. Yeah. So yeah. there's, we have different size front tires and rear tires because you have larger rear tires to be able to get the traction down to the, the pavement. So there's construction differences, there's also compound differences. Again, on ovals, you have a more durable right side compound and you have a softer inside compound, basically it's gonna wear a little bit more quickly, um, but if you were to put that compound on the, the outside, it would wear out very quickly. Mm -hmm. very quickly. It's happened before. You've had races where the mechanics might grab the wrong tires. Mm -hmm. um, it happened mm -hmm. to a car two years ago at the Indianapolis 500 where their, their yeah, team yeah. grabbed two different cars, two different tires, right front and left front, left front and the right front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying. Well, it happened to Dixon once this season, Dixon. too. Yeah, that's Dixon okay. this season, yeah, the Indy 500, this. it was actually Marco. It was on Marco's car, uh, and we're, right now we have right. telemetry in the in the timing stand, so we actually we can actually see that. At that point, we didn't, mm. but I heard over the radio something. They said something's wrong with your um, right front tire, so they didn't have the pressure that they had in it. So mm. the pressure sensors are affixed to the wheels. They're not. They don't. It says it's a left front tire because that's what it's read, it's designed to read. So if that left front tire is actually in the right front position, it's actually the right front tire, but it reads, that's, it's reads it differently. Oh, so wow. when, when the tires came off, if you put a really stiff, really durable tire on the left side, it's not getting as much load as it is normally used to, so the pressure rise isn't gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. So they saw that and they saw those differences and it, like something they were trying to figure out what went wrong. So we looked at it, we saw that the left front pressure was way higher than it should have been and the right front pressure was way lower than it should have been. From, so from that we were able to realize, all right, you're out on track, but it looks like bombed. you're probably- You, you need to come back in, please. Yes, yes, please. Please, please come back. Please and thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. I recall that Marco was not pleased I on the radio. I don't he was very no. pleased about that either. He was, no. he was, he was displeased, which rightfully so. Yes. <laughs> well, it, right. goes, it goes to show you the importance of making sure yeah. All of your car conditions are right. So both mm -hmm. on a race tire with ours, Just stuff in real don't put them in the wrong place, but also with your, your passenger car. If you go and you, if for some reason you have low pressure on one of your one of your front tires, you might pull to the right. Mm -hmm. Or if you have low pressure on all of your tires, you can end up paying a lot more at the gas pump. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a tip to your listeners out there, make sure you have the right inflation pressure in your tires. You might save a couple bucks at the gas pump. Yeah, it'll get it'll add up after a while. Yep, yeah. You'll get better gas mileage and Keeping your tires properly inflated is the best thing you can do to make their life la their life last yes. as long as it should. Absolutely. Right, In addition to yes. rotating and balancing and all that yeah. good stuff. But yeah, my dad, I um, I grew up working on cars with my dad, and so it was always you know like this is a machine, and machines don't work as well as you allow them to. Yes. You got to take care of them, and but yet under inflation is the biggest reason that your tires die too yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And always check it when it gets yeah. cold like this because that air compresses. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. So, I, I always like the joke of winter air versus summer air. But again, you know when it gets colder out, the inflation pressure inside your car or inside your tire is lower. So it's a good time to check it, Matt. Yeah, it is. So funny story on our drive out to Pocono. It was Molly and I and our friend Juliana from New Mexico. Um, she flew out and road tripped with us to come out to the Pocono race. And I had just bought a minivan. Um, I don't have any kids. They asked me the dealership, do you have any kids? No, I don't. We just go to a lot of races and we camp. Oh, do you really like camping? Oh, stuff. Uh, we just really like to drink though. And so we can't really leave the racetrack at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So, so I have a minivan now. And, um, as we, one does. As, as one, one does. does. Yep. Habits. Um, and so, you know, we pull off to get gas and I'm, and I'm like, Ooh, you know what I should, I was like, I'm going to check the tire pressure. Cause we've been on the road mm -hmm. for, you know, like seven hours at this point. And so they were a little low and I knew they were hot and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I go and look and I'm like, okay, here's what they are. And then I'm like, here's what they should be pulled and this and that. And so I put my quarters in and I'm going around and Molly and Julianne are standing there. Cause I was like, it's, it's a one person job, you know, yeah. I'm like, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I look up and I go, Kara would be so proud of me. Cause I'm doing all kinds of science and math in my head. I was like the <laughs> algorithm that I am running in my head to know what this should be. Cause it's a hot tire. That's excellent. I was like, I feel like a badass, and Kara would be so proud. Yes, I would. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I know this looks really simple, but there's a lot happening so right I'm, now. You, you know, you have your cold tire pressures, and so obviously it needs to be a little bit higher, so there's a little bit of math involved. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, uh, but, yeah, so the tires, I mean, yeah, it seems like, oh, tire, that's, you know, but it's it's so complex. Yeah, yeah there's, a lot, there's a lot that goes into it. That's why we have a fantastic team in Akron mm -hmm. that actually is, is working on those. So it's not anything one person can do on their own, just... We've got compounders, people that are either chemists or chemical engineers. Oh, wow. There's mm -hmm. the they're the ones that are designing the tread compounds, all of that to make the, the tires have excellent grip out there. But then you also have the structure and structural engineers. So mm -hmm. people that have a mechanical engineering degree or that are looking at the if you think of a, a tire as is kind of if you think about a piece of concrete that has the rebar in it to make mm -hmm. it strong. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of fibers, a lot of metal that makes those makes those tires strong so how you put those together is really important it is that's it I, is that's interesting to know about like the, the makeup of the team that was really cool yeah. cool mm. all right yeah. I was like, hmm. i'll tell you what else i really enjoy about firestone um is that when you guys do testing or you know if there's a race where the tires don't behave the way that you thought they were going to um i, I just love how you guys immediately go to the drivers and say you know, all right give me feedback yeah. you know what did you like what did you not like how did it feel because you know they're in the car you guys are you know are, are there and present but you know it's they have a, an experience with it that you guys don't have and I just love that again that open mm -hmm. communication yeah uh -huh. that's that's really important to us it's really important to me and to the whole team to know that when Sebastian Bourdais gets out of the car if there's something that he doesn't like about the tires or he think he thinks something that should be changed for next year that he finds our engineers right away they always will wait you know we have an engineer working in every couple of cars so in the pits there's always engineering staff out there and we're always trying to get that feedback because you can design the best tire in the world mm -hmm. on paper and it can be the best tire in the world in your simulations but until you actually put it out there and understand how the driver feels about it or how um, how they perceive it it's not necessarily the fastest tire that you need. It's the tire that the drivers can drive the best. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. feedback is really important. That's why we, when we do tire testing, we test with our IndyCar drivers. And then we learn so much when we're out there at the racetrack. That's why our, the people that are actually doing the design and the development of the tires are the, one that, the ones that are traveling. Oh, that's good. Wow. That's awesome. All sorts of tidbits today. I uh, know. I'm here <laughs> yeah. for it. Awesome. I'm, I am here for all of this. Well, not tire related. I want you to tell the story about your grandpa because it's my favorite <gasps> yes. fun fact yes. about you. Okay, so this is fun. I was able to tell this at the Opportunities for Women, Women in Motorsports panel today. But my, my grandfather actually piqued some of my initial interest in engineering. Um, he was the engineer in the family. This is my mom's father mm -hmm. and he worked at NASA which you know the kid as a kid you know you don't okay yep that's what my grandfather the grandfather does he works at NASA he works on space shuttles everybody has a cool job like that but he started it in NASA his career military and then he moved into NASA as an engineer and he worked on the Apollo missions some of the very early Apollo missions all the way through the space shuttle missions and he was able to design the the swing door system so he worked on the the basically the swing doors what the hold the space shuttle up and the astronauts load in on mm -hmm. and then the sound suppression system the water that comes up when the shuttle launches so he 
was actually on the launch team, so for the shuttle missions, he was part of the launch team. And he had a lot of stories that he loved to tell and then a lot of stories that he just wouldn't talk about. You know, yeah. one of the ones was we talked about the, the Challenger. And I know mm -hmm. from family that he was essentially locked into the room after the Challenger disaster happened and basically locked everybody in for like 24 hours and mm -hmm. they had to go through some of their, their analysis to figure out what went wrong. But going, going through, you know, having my grandfather as an engineer there at NASA, it's a lot of inspiration. And we're going through some, some pictures the other day and found a photo of me at Kennedy Space Center in, it's going to show my age, 1979 in a baby carrier. And I was looking at the date and it said arrival of Discover, Discovery to um, Kennedy Space Center. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, that was before the first launch, because the first launch was 81, 82. Mm -hmm. um, and I was trying to go through and look at information, and I pulled that date up, and I Googled it, and I realized that was actually the first time a space shuttle had ever been in Kennedy Space Center. It was, as they were building it, it went from Elgin Air Force Base mm -hmm. all the way over to Kennedy Space Center. So I found some pictures of me, and then I found some pictures on the Internet and some of my grandfather's old history stuff. There's a scaffolding in the background, and I'm like, oh, there's a scaffolding, and like, there's a picture of the space shuttle arriving, and I'm somewhere in that crowd. So <laughs> it was really neat to That's realize really cool. I have that that tangible connection to history. Like mm -hmm. I was there when the first space shuttle got to Kennedy Space Space Center. So yeah. it's fun. Yeah. That's so very cool. really, really neat stuff about my grandfather as an engineer, and you know, not really. I, I wish with with time i wish now i would have been able to ask more questions and write mm -hmm. stuff down and, and sure. had, i'm sure he had some phenomenal stories he was one of the um, one of the people that got locked in a room when they were trying to, to fix the apollo mission we we're trying to figure out what what they needed to do to, to fix the the shuttle so essentially he they gave him a box of parts and said you know fix this this is what the astronauts have fix yeah that. so so for everyone who's seen the movie apollo 13 yes, exactly. that scene where yeah they dump, dump a bunch a of parts on the table and yeah. they're like this is what they have find a solution yes. and so Your he grandfather was actually was in that room in that room that is really so cool fun stuff that's, yeah. that's, that is awesome that's really really got to cool. be able to be a good problem solver to be trusted to, to be yeah. in that yeah. so and yeah. think outside the box yes <laughs> yes yeah quite literally yes yeah. yes that is yeah that's i lo i love that well, it's just, it's just so cool that you come from a family of, you know, very pro-science, yes. very pro-education, yeah. and, you know, because it's, it's much more common now for, you know, it's becoming more common for women to be in these fields and for mm -hmm. them to be encouraged. You know, I don't feel like there's, you know, really heavy discouragement. We're working on, you know, more encouragement, but, you know, say we're just a little bit younger than you, and it's like we had parents that were like that, but not everybody yeah. did. Yeah. There were a lot of people that it was, yeah. you know, Girls get pink and boys get blue, and that's the way it is. There's yes. no discussion yeah. about it, and so I think that's great that you came from such an awesome, supportive family. Yeah, it's it's and great. Smart family. Every yeah. every once in a while, I hear stories of of people saying that, you know, somebody said to their daughter that they couldn't do something. There's a, a engineer that works in Formula One on uh, Toro Rosso, and he was telling me his his daughter was at kindergarten, and she said she wanted to be a scientist, and one of the boys in the class told her, "You can't be a scientist. You're a girl." I mean, this is this is. 2018 right. come on people and you know he had come home and he told me he told her the story about me being an engineer and what I do and and it just it it it's really interesting for, to me because I had my upgrade my upbringing was you can do whatever you want there was mm -hmm. never any I never realized that some of the gender gender stereotypes existed until I got to college or out in the industry that you, you see some of the some of the prejudice or some mm -hmm. of the stereotypes that are out there mm -hmm. And, and, and piggying back off of that and the, the great uh, opportunity opportunity for women in motorsports panel, mm -hmm. I'm going to like flip that like eight times before <laughs> this, to say. this weekend is over. Um, you know, I've got, I've got uh, friends who have, have girls who are, are interested in science and they, they want to be engineers. What, if you could like say something to, to the girls out there, they're like, I really want to do science. And yet there's still that almost, what, what do you think? What's some advice or, or what would you tell them? So I think first of all is knowing that you're interested in science. So if you like toys, if you like to figure out why things work or how things work, or if you like chemistry, if you like, there's, there's so many different things. If you're curious, if you ask a lot of questions, chances are science and engineering are probably a good field for somebody who asks a lot of questions and somebody who's mm -hmm. curious. Yeah. So there's always teachers, you know, your teachers have resources, um, your parents have resources. and even even as far as looking in social media and connecting with some people that are in a field that you might be interested in. Maybe you're interested in race cars. Maybe you talk to some people that are out in the field 
Or maybe you're interested in airplanes. My little sister is an engineer for Boeing. She was actually out at the Portland race, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. Um, but <laughs> and, you, and your you nephew do... was dressed as the Firehawk. Oh, oh my goodness. The cutest I wish little you... Firehawk ever. I wish you people that are listening to this wonderful podcast could see these pictures. He was just, he was adorable. My sister, also <laughs> an engineer, she actually made the suit. Oh, my gosh. She gosh. did the Firestone F-Shield. She made a tail. The oh, tail, cute. like, when I saw him, I had tears in my eyes. It was so sweet. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the tail had stuff and it was gorgeous but it was so much so if you like airplanes you know there are opportunities there if you like sound systems there you you can do things there I have a a friend who actually designs a replacement joint so there's there's so many different things that you can eventually do so ask questions um, and if you're of high school age looking at colleges look at a college that has hands-on projects I did Mm. formula SAE but my sister did an airplane design team. There's a concrete canoe team. There's all different types of things that you can do based on what you're interested in. My advice would, would be to go out, see what's interesting, mm-hmm. ask questions, and then get involved. If I get a resume that comes across my desk and it says, I got an engineering degree, and here are the classes that I took. I'm like, okay, great. You've got a, you got a really high GPA. That's great. But what did you do? What what yeah, hands yeah. on? What sets you apart? And so, so you have the ability to turn that theory into something tangible absolutely absolutely what have you done Let, show me show me what you've done so mm-hmm. those are the things that stick out my I was talking about Anna before my mm-hmm. engineer Anna when I saw her resume she was a team captain of the Formula SA team at the University of Akron in fact I think I, I might have mentioned it before but when we went to hire for her position I had somebody come to me and bring me her resume and said listen this is a mini Kara you have to hire her <laughs> so I was like all right, we'll look. We'll look at her. And we'll look at all the other candidates. But yeah, having something that sets you apart is great. Whatever you do, whether you choose engineering, whether you choose journalism, whatever you decide to do, nursing, whatever you do with your mm-hmm. career, what sets you apart? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I say, um, my I say, we both grew up with in families with parents that were very supportive and all that. And yeah, when I was growing up, my parents, since I did love to play Legos, Connects came out. Yeah. Um, and you could make all these cool things. Yes. And so we started, you know, I was, I, when they first came out, I'm like, I want that. And so my mom's like, all right, cool. I'm like, that's fine. I'm like, you know, she never, mm-hmm. I mean, my, my baby, my nursery was yellow walls and green carpet because yes. she was not having any part of, of pink. It was very, like, everything's gender neutral. We're not doing that. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, so my mom's like, yeah, absolutely. So started with, you know, a motorcycle. All right, I made the motorcycle. I mean, awesome. and I was like, "Can we go back to the store today?" Like, I'm done with this now. Good, good uh, let me. Yeah. And so we worked up to the. Um, I did a Ferris wheel, and then there was a roller coaster, mm-hmm. and I didn't like the layout of the roller coaster. So I looked at the plans, I started building it, and I was like, "You know what? I don't think so." And so then I got awesome. a piece of paper, yes. and I redesigned, <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, you know what? This motorcycle and this plane are gonna have to come apart because I need more parts." Yes. <laughs> and then, like on the loop. That had like special attraction, but I was adding a second loop. So I'm like, make it right? So then I said, I said yeah. "Do we have anything in the garage that's like this that we can?" <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yes, uh-huh. and and like you said, so there are, there are things like that getting connect yeah. sets, learning mm-hmm. that. Arduino boards are another thing. They're yeah. basically you can come up with your own custom programming to design things. Mm-hmm. We've seen a lot of science fair projects lately that wow. have those. So that's there's cool. a lot of cool Very stuff, cool. There a lot is. of cool resources on the internet. Well, and you can even get like kids microscopes for. I mean, they're yes. you know they're yeah. not they're not crazy expensive. They're not five dollars, but they're not crazy expensive yes. either. Yeah. My older sister um, works. Um, she's a molecular biologist, and so she's very sciencey. So, yeah. I she gave me a microscope when I was maybe nine or ten, mm-hmm. and it was awesome. awesome. And I was totally awesome. into yeah. it. And it came with a kit, and there were there was like a bee and a couple of different things to dissect. I remember that kit. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, sorry. then it also came because she's a scientist. Mm-hmm. She, it was a second box of everything I needed to mount my own slides. And then she showed me, she said, what do you want to look at under the microscope? I'm going to show you how to mount your own slide and do this. And then you can, you know, dissect anything and look at it and just go to town. And I mean, as a third grade, I was like, this is awesome. I, I was like, yeah. what, what can you look at on the microscope? Yeah. She goes, we're all pulling out anything. Right. Right. She's like, like whatever anything, can do. everything. Yes. I'm yes. like, okay, yeah. let's do yes. this. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm like the microphone, there were, yeah, microscope set. Oh, I, I loved that That's as a kid. And yeah, they're not, yeah, they're not, they're not crazy expensive. You can, <laughs> You can find a good deal on those for your kiddos that are that yes. are into, into yeah. science, especially right now. It's and there's yeah, Christmas there's a lot of, and, there's a lot yeah. of kits. So there's a lot of things that are, are not very expensive that you mm-hmm. can do. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I love that your mom did like the science yeah. for the that garage. That's so cool. But, and she didn't spend much money at all on that. I mean, she she had the microscopes that she brought from school, so that would be the the high investment thing. But I mean, like I said, she she went to places and asked if people had anything left over that they we could look at whether it was one of the things that we did was a toilet paper rocket. So it's not actually a real rocket, but it was like a certain light one ply sheet of toilet paper that you can you could take and you put a little teeny tiny piece of tape on it and then you light the bottom of it and it burns and then it kind of floats up in the air and so then mm-hmm. you okay why does that work and you understand the mm-hmm. science behind it so That's things really that cool. there are plenty of things that don't cost a lot of money but that are really fun to do yeah, yeah. are very fun and yeah. very keep kids attention yes. and then it's okay let's mm-hmm. now it's you know why does this happen yes. can we do it with something else yes and, I always talk about like science camps, and when I get it, we get to toilet paper and cow eyeballs, I lose some people. But <laughs> you ladies are cool, so we're good. Oh no, we're here for this. No, you got the cow eyeball. I'm like, I've done a sheep. I'm yeah, sure it's very say. similar. <laughs> so so like, I, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Sheep yeah. Yes. I think there's yeah still I, I'm, there's probably still a slide mounted with part of it in my mom's house somewhere in a closet. Uh, she's gonna find it one day. Go what over. is this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's in the box yes. with all of the other slides. Yes. I mean, it's not just hanging out. <laughs> By yeah. myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that would be Definitely funny. slide. <laughs> yeah. Hair from 10 year old Abby. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cat hair as well, because I want yeah. to compare. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 What's, yeah. what's the size difference and what does it look like? Our hair feels different. different. It probably yeah. looks I'm different. Sure there's some my sister there. has curly hair. I need, sorry, I'm going to have to take one of your pieces yeah. there. Sorry. <laughs> for science. It's for science. For science. It's for real. It's for science, though. It's for science. Gosh, heaven. So. Non-science, non-tire, fun question that okay. we are now Excellent. starting to ask because it's the time to ask. Any fun like traditions over the holidays that you do for a family? You know, either your your own family or like extended family. Anything fun you guys do? So we rotate between Christmas at, at my parents' house and Thanksgiving at his parents' house, mm-hmm. where we flip flop. So that's always fun to to do that. Um, I've got um, my one of my hidden talent is music. So at one point. Really? Um, my, How did we not know this? Uh, it's all right. <laughs> say, what so, instrument? Are you um, I play the piano and I also play the flute. So Shut up. Like my, oh my, gosh. my parents' church has this, um, they do Silent Night. And at yeah. one point yeah. I said I played the flute and they had me do this little thing. And I just I love it. That's it's. I, I break it out once a year. Yeah. yeah. It, but, but it's it's fun. It, it's it's really pretty and it's just yeah. it's a fun thing That's to do. So, so cool. I, they asked me again. Oh, can you come in and can you play it for Christmas Eve? I'm like, sure, for you guys, sure. Oh, I love it. That's so That's awesome. awesome. So yeah, I'm piano and French horn. Oh, excellent. Okay. And I'm piano and oboe. Oh, excellent. All right. That We've was... got a piano trio. As soon as you said piano, we're Abby, Molly, and I are going to just go. We're just going to tour, and, yeah, exactly. and um, that's how we're going to bring our, our we'll bring our loads. pianos to the racetracks. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just on different tracks. Maybe maybe the French horn, oboe. Flute thing might work out a little bit better. We'll let we'll let Andrew know to throw a keyboard on the uh, on the trailer for the stage and everything. There you go. We'll get this set up next. We're gonna need more speakers. We're also gonna need a keyboard (laughs) and Uh, maybe a couple of mics. We're gonna oh definitely some mics. We're gonna have to do back home again in Indiana. We'll we'll find a couple. We'll we'll set some stuff up. Brainstorm. That's Three part cool. heart and soul. I bet you weren't expecting. That I answer. was not, and I I love it though. Love it. Every yeah. time we interview somebody, even like you that we've interviewed forever, there's always something. I'm like, huh? I didn't know that. I love it. Fun. Yeah. That was cool. That yeah. is very cool. Awesome. Well, and I say you obviously use both sides of your brain. Yeah, yeah it's say you're probably it's, pretty split down the middle. Almost don't really have a dominant side. Well, it's good. I like the ability to do the highly technical and then the ability to do the artistic um, mm-hmm. it, that actually balances me out a little bit mm-hmm. even when I went to school I had two different majors to be able to, to maybe balance that off you do the, the super much engineering technical math calculus stuff and then I did language too so I took a lot of culture and you double language. majored with an engineering degree yeah oh my what God. is wrong with well, you I squeezed four years of college into six too so like yeah there's that too yeah. I, okay. Yeah, it's fun. I took the scenic route yeah. as well. The yeah. victory lap, as we called victory it in my lap, yeah. There's a victory lap there. First senior year. Couple for me. Second <laughs> senior year. Third senior. Maybe if you're the final two or seven years yes. for me. Yeah. That's, That's all right. Yeah. yeah. That happens. That's so cool. Oh, okay. See, every time, every time somebody keeps. Yeah. I learn something new. <laughs> I'm fun. like, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, oh, so we asked um, when we went to the Born Racer. Uh, premiere we asked a bunch of people this and I just really enjoyed this question this is is, I think this might be our fun question for this year Um, so if there were to be a movie made about your life who would you want to play you oh yeah so that's that's easy Um, what's her name Marissa no that 
Marissa Tomei? Yes. 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 Like my cousin Benny. Yes, my cousin. Oh, oh my yes. goodness. That's a perfect. So, yes. my, I love her. When when she that's a BS question and she goes yeah, to that like, whole thing. Yeah, she's like no like, because yeah. It didn't, oh yeah. So oh that's I love that. And when that I saw that movie, it was epic. like oh, yes. This is I saw that scene even before I was into Cars and I knew Cars and I was like. She is amazing. <laughs> I like her. I like her character. So, yes, Marissa Torme, if I'm going to be portrayed by anybody, that. we'll have to find her. Absolutely. Oh, my, that, that's doable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's such a great scene. <laughs> that is an awesome It's also just a great movie. Yeah. It is a good Sorry. movie. And I just, I love her. She is. Yes. Yeah. She's fiery, yeah. feisty. Good choice. I think that fits for you. Yeah. I like it. She's feisty. You're yeah. out there. Yeah. You're telling them what for. Look here, that's drivers. Right. Yes. This it's not the tires. Run, it's you. Run the right pressure. Right. <laughs> Maybe if you put them... On yeah, the correct on the right side, side. You have these problems. Just, just, just saying. Yeah. Maybe it's a user problem. <laughs> that would be one of my. That was one of my dad's famous things. It's like I've tried it. It's not doing this. It's not doing this. He'd come and he'd do it, and he's. I think it's a user issue. Uh, yes. Or if it's like a computer issue, maybe the error is between the seat and the keyboard. Yes. Yeah. Like like the like the saying goes in, in racing, it's the nut that connects the steering wheel to the seat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I not like that. All right, that's a new one. You can use that. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, that is fantastic. That's really, really good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm here for that one, too. Yeah, yeah I'm here for all of this. <laughs> um. yeah, I enjoyed that one. I enjoyed that one. So, all right, so um, what else are you guys working on in the... Not off, Not off season. season. Not off season. season. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of things that we're doing is the just continual development. So sure. you know, when we when we run an Indy 500, while we're there, we're already working on the next year's Indy 500. I'm sure. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff we've done there. Um, Indianapolis, they just had a resurfacing, so they put this uh, emulsion down on the surface. Mm -hmm. If you've been to IMS since they put this down, the surface is very, very dark. So it will it, lighten it, up by May. It'll yeah. light. It'll lighten up. So yeah. Everybody, With everybody, relax. Sun cycles. It'll be all right. So not we, that it matters. Yes. It'll still be a thousand degrees on the grid that day, regardless yes. of what color that track yes. is. So. Yeah, exactly. It's always a little bit miserable, but <laughs> we love the race. There's nothing like being at the oh. starting grid of the Indy 500. We tested there earlier, um, mm -hmm. towards the end of the season, and then. After they did the surface treatment, we went back and we retested. We had six six drivers there, and mm -hmm. we got some really good feedback on the on the changes that we made to kind of work with the new kit. So excellent. Good. Yeah. Good. Now I know that IndyCar has been, you know, working on you know like a windshield or something like that to help mm -hmm. you know kind of prevent head injuries and things like you know Justin Wilson's accident and you know things like that. Um, I assume that's going to affect the tire because it's going to change, you know, the airflow and, and uh, the car. So are you guys kind of, have you started that process? Or are you kind of waiting until they decide what they're going to do? Because so you can only do, do so much yes, until they have a yeah. final product. But Yeah, the change is not that much. It's not going to be something that is like you have to start from to a brand scratch. new aero kit or sure. start from scratch. So um, the, the nice thing about the tire development of Firestone is that it's happened over a long period of time. Um, we design our tires to work with different types of, back when we were in the IndyCar and Champ Car days, we actually ran the same road course tires, mm -hmm. both in the IndyCar series and the Champ Car series. The Champ Car Makes was sense. branded Bridgestone, the yeah. IndyCar was branded Firestone, IRL was branded Firestone. So um, there, there's a lot of, they're designed with a bit of versatility in mind, just not just for particular vehicles, although when the new aero kit came out, we had to readjust some of our, our mm -hmm. design targets. Um, but also for wide ranges of temperature, we look at Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We've been there on days where we've been covered in God. blankets. And um, <laughs> yeah, there, I think there's a picture of me floating out somewhere where I've got like five jackets and a blanket sitting at our timing, timing stand. But we have to design tires that are going to work at 50 degrees. And we have some really hot days. It hit 93 yeah. at oh, Indianapolis God. this year. And speaking of warm and miserable, yeah. it is. But we have our compounders that are able to design for a wide range of temperatures. Yeah, because it's just, it's everything that affects the tires too. Everybody, forget, sometimes they forget, yeah, like if it's cold, you can't run that same compound if it was, you know, 50 degrees to 70 degrees. That I imagine that's, you can't, you can't do it. No, no. Man. Well, look, May in Indianapolis has got to be the most unpredictable weather. Absolutely. Um, my, my mom and I always laugh, it's, I mean, because you never know, it could be 95 degrees, it could be 60 degrees. Yeah. And uh, the threat of rain is mm -hmm. daily yes. mm -hmm. until Memorial Day. And then we'll go a month and a half without a drop. It's, yes. yeah, I don't know what, so what, what that is, but it's like yes. it just wants to toy with us all month long mm -hmm. for the 500. And then it's like, yeah, that, that Memorial Day. Yeah. We, won't, we won't see rain for months now. Mm -hmm. And fun fact about team engineers at, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and rain. 
the more days in a row it rains, the more the team engineers start to develop little twitches in their eyes. And start, yeah. And vent problems. And mm. it's just, they're very, very high strung because they haven't had time to get their testing in. Oh, so no. oh yeah. You don't want to have too many to, days in a row. Yeah, but they get real twitchy real really, quick. Really, really twitchy. Start yes. to, yeah, get facial tics yes. and, yeah. Just that move and that move. So oh, God. Veins start popping out of foreheads. Yeah. When yeah. I, my very first year working as an engineer at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the month of May, um, I was designing street course tires, but we all work as a team, so I had some contribution to the Indy 500 tires. My manager at the time said, when you go to Indy, just be prepared because people are different there. <laughs> Over the month of May, people are different. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He goes, I can't really explain it, but people change and you'll find out. And I was like, well, that sounds ominous. Yeah. But after, okay. after a bit of time, I realized, okay, you're spending all day every day with these people. And... There's a lot of pressure. It's the yeah. biggest racing and the racing event in the world, the biggest single day motorsports mm -hmm. event in the world, and all of the eyes are on everybody. And if you're not performing, then you're not doing well. So if a, a team engineer or something has something that they're working on, it can be a seem the life moment, and, life yeah. or death oh, wow. for them. So oh, yeah. yeah, wow. All right. Yeah. I apologize. No, I, I, I forgot to text the the person we're meeting with later this afternoon. I said that I checked him this morning and gave him an ETA, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, I got four minutes to spare on it still being morning. Yes. <laughs> Surprise! I got it. Yes. Better get that in. Um, so, but great. Well, but yeah. um, we like to give everybody the last word. We said we keep you here till noon. So, what do you got? Awesome. Well, thanks so much for inviting me to come oh. talk to you. I'm glad this really worked out because it happened to be PRI weekend it's and PRI I happen to be here. Yeah. So, and there are so no race cars to ladies. No the race cars. I might have to just put talk. some like sound in the background. Yeah, just, just put, it, put the audio yeah. in yeah. the background. That's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that. good. We're, we're excited about our 2019 season where mm -hmm. um, our engineering, engineering team has been working really hard. Our motorsports management and marketing team, all of the pieces are coming together for the season. So, we're looking forward to it. Well, and so. I'll tell you what, I want to add this thing as well, when, since, since you asked about things that, you know, young women can do. If you come to a race, Kara's the nicest person ever. Aww. If you are a, a female, I say, mm. it, well, if you're anybody that's, that's into science in that business, yeah. but especially, say, because one of our um, friend's daughters, Allie, yes, I hung too. out with you, oh and my oh my gosh, like, she was just totally starstruck. But oh, Kara awesome. will 100% chat, nice. chat and be nice, and I mean, I've, I've, you're just, I mean, you. and you're very honest when you're like, you. okay, I'm busy, I have to, you know, I have to go right now, but I'll be back, yeah. like, yeah. will you be yeah. here later, mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate that about Thank you, because it's not mm -hmm. just lip service, you know, you very much are, are supportive, and it's like, yeah, if you have questions, you want to come hang out in my booth for an hour, I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah, like, Allie, I mean, literally just did not stop grinning for days. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, Ting. She, she was great. She had great questions, but yeah, just having to having getting people interested in science and mm -hmm. racing. I know you ladies are really passionate about racing. You know, just getting that next generation of yeah. fans, mm -hmm. and for me, getting that next generation of engineers is really yeah. important. Mm -hmm. That so. mentoring part is really important to me. It really so. is. So if you got kids who are into science, bring them to any car race. That's right. Yeah. Come stop by. Yep. Yeah. Just ask anybody. Do you know where Kara Addison is? Because everybody knows her. Ha, that's yes. Right. Thanks. I've got a kid that's into science. I need Kara. Oh, perfect. We know where she is. Yeah. She's, She's over there. there. <laughs> that's for the big red F. That's <laughs> <laughs> I found her. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you again so thank very you. much. We much. always love talking to you. Uh, and thank you, Abby, Molly. Yeah. Really appreciate your time. Oh, we appreciate, we appreciate your time. Too, so, yeah, we're excited to see all the cool things that happen this season. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So close. Again, our huge thank you to Kara Adams from Bridgestone Firestone for joining us during PRI weekend. It's fun to talk with her and not hear cars in the background. If you are curious, we actually do have our website back up and running. It's www.fastcarsfastgirls.com and that has everything on it from our blogs, how you can subscribe, our social media. But if you want, you can also check out our social media. Our Twitter is fastcars in 317. Our Instagram is Fast Cars, Fast Girls. And of course, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash Fast Cars, Fast Girls. All news and info will be on there. You probably want to keep an eye on it right now. Got a lot of interviews lined up, so we're going to be doing a lot of interviews and not our normal sit down and chit chat episodes. Of course, we would love it if you would continue to share this podcast with your friends and family and perhaps even send a review on our way. That's also all on our website. So thank you guys so very much, and we will see you next episode.